Hi, I'm Dr. Kevin Higashigawa, and I'm the team doctor for the Santa Cruz Warriors. I'm an orthopedic surgeon, and I specialize in sports medicine. I want to thank you today for joining us for the C-Dubs Classic this month. And I also like to thank our partners, 1440 Multi University, for hosting this event. Uh, please enjoy our cooking demonstration for this month. My name is Frank Ashmore, Managing Director of 1440 Multiversity. I want to welcome you to our beautiful campus for the March installment of Virtual C-Dub Classics presented by Kaiser Permanente. C-Dub Classics provides monthly health and wellness activities in Santa Cruz County residents. So it's my pleasure to introduce you to 1440 Multiversity, this beautiful learning destination set on 75 private acres of redwood forest here in the Santa Cruz Mountains of Scotts Valley, California. Our work is driven by a deep passion to create hope for others to live well. So welcome to our campus and let's get started. We're standing near the Sanctuary Waterfall along the Bridge of Intentions. Visitors to 1440 often seek a journey of transformation, perhaps a change from a certain place in life that's impacting their heart, mind, and well-being. Each travels with a variety of emotions that speak to their personal story. Some arrive happy and excited, others experiencing deep trauma or pain, and perhaps simply seeking to find their own truth, which they hope they can discover while engaging in a variety of inclusive wellness experiences we offer each day. Symbolically, guests take their first steps on campus across the Bridge of Intentions, over the water to represent the start of their journey. Have you heard the old saying, it's water under the bridge? Well, we encourage them to begin their journey by letting go of the past and focus on their wellness journey as they cross. Many guests stop and allow the tactile stimulation of their senses to take over as soon as they step into this space. You pass by this tall towering redwood, inhale the smells of the trees, feel the subtle breeze of the wind against your body, and the sound of water crashing over the rocks as you begin to allow yourself to relax and become more present in the moment. As a learning destination where energy discovery and creativity flourish, which is our mission statement, taking these first steps across the bridge and over the flowing water begins that journey of self-discovery and creates the wonderful sense of hope that their visit to 1440 Multiversity is going to be transformational. So what is a multiversity? Multi represents the multitude of doors one can open to explore on their personal journey of well-being. You can take classes, reflect in nature, journal, or engage in conversations that matter with others. Versity represents the learning component. The difference between 1440 and a public university is that here, we don't teach traditional subject matter you might learn in a school environment like reading, writing, and arithmetic. Instead, we focus on the social, emotional, and relational aspects of learning. 1440, the number of minutes in a day, multiversity, the journey one takes to explore the variety of ways to learn and enhance your social, emotional, relational, and physical holistic well-being. Let's begin our journey. The Redwood Conference Center is home to a 700-person auditorium, retreat center, and one-of-a-kind sleeping pods with this beautiful outdoor amphitheater in the background that seats 300 people. We host mission-aligned organizations who hold conferences, retreats, TED-type talks, and True North leadership training programs in our leadership center. This venue is also utilized for many community events for local residents. Because 1440 was built as an immersive learning place, all guests that come here are registered as overnight visitors. So to create a more inclusive experience for those who live in the community, we hold local community mission-aligned community building events on campus for everyone to enjoy. Things like mindful movie nights, teaching kitchen classes, you'll get to see that later, nature brunches on Sundays, wellness weekends, and speaker series featuring renowned authors, poets, doctors, business leaders, and other luminaries. We like to say 1440 is not a place of like-minded individuals, but rather a place where like-hearted people come together to serve the greater good. For example, we recently introduced the Healing Our Healthcare Heroes initiative. The Healing Our Healthcare Heroes program is sponsored by medical networks such as Kaiser Permanente and others, foundations, nonprofit organizations, and members of the community who share our intention of caring for our frontline medical workers so they can in turn provide better care for the communities in which they serve. The gift of visiting 1440 is knowing that there are like-hearted individuals all over campus. Let's head over to another one of my favorite spots on campus over at the Healing Arts Center. Welcome to the Healing Arts Center, which includes this beautiful negative edge infinity tub overlooking the towering redwoods. Guests love to come to this area throughout the campus day and night as a way to soothe themselves and just unwind. The invitation to participate at 1440 Multiversity is extended to all people, unbound by the range of human differences. We believe in the human struggle 
and, our, and that, that it's our collective responsibility to make things better, one relationship and one resilient act at a time. Our team is passionately committed to developing genuine connections and sharing inspirational experiences with our guests and one another without the fear of being judged. It's a safe place for everyone to be nurtured and loved. Part of being loved is making sure that every guest has the opportunity to participate in our signature classes. Every guest looks forward to attending our signature classes. We have world-class faculty that leads contemplative work, embodied movement, art classes, and nature hikes that stimulate curiosity, enhance self-awareness, and build our energy so that we can all feel more fully alive and mindful. Our teachers and staff like to think of 1440 Multiversity as a human charging station, a place that emphasizes the social, emotional, and relational aspects of life and well-being holistically that develops in our hearts and minds. Every guest who stays on campus is encouraged to attend a minimum of three signature classes a day, typically in the morning before breakfast, in the early afternoon after lunch, and then again in the evening before dinner service. We have samples of our daily itineraries online available at 1440.org under Rest and Renewal Stay Packages if you'd like to take a look. Some examples of our signature class categories that we offer for all the guests that stay here include nutrition and cooking demonstrations, guided nature walks and hikes, a variety of yoga and meditation, creative expression like mandala art, rhythm drumming and improv, and embodied movement classes such as Tai Chi and Qigong. The ultimate goal for everyone who visits our campus is to immerse themselves and leave with more energy than they arrived with. Then using that energy, discovering creativity, they will be inspired to go out into the world and pass along their positive energy forward and create hope for others to live well. Let's head down to one of my most visited spots on the campus. No visit to the 1440 Multiversity campus is complete without a visit to where we are now, the spiritual place called the Cathedral, and it's home to the oldest resident of the 1440 campus, the majestic 1300-year-old redwood known as the Mother Tree. The Mother Tree stands 250 feet tall and as an organism has spent its entire life standing still, yet inspires us all to live and maintain our own well-being. Let's pause for a moment and take in the majesty of the ancient place, free from the outside world that dates back to 700 AD. Hi, I'm Kenny Woods, Executive Chef 1440 Multiversity. Here on campus, we focus on nutrition and food as medicine. We partner with local farms and grow our own food here on the campus. Nutrition is a big part of who we are, and I'd love to explain to you more about plant-based cooking here in our teaching kitchen. Let's head on over. Welcome, you're in the teaching kitchen with Chef Kenny Woods. In this lesson, I'll be teaching you how to make a panzanella salad. Panzanella salad, also known as a bread salad, is an Italian salad that goes back many years and generations, even with my family. Let's get started. All right, so our first step to this recipe is the most important part, the bread. So I've chosen a local sourdough. This sourdough has some olives baked into it, but you can use whatever fresh sourdough that really relates to you or is your favorite. We're gonna take some local olive oil and we're going to just drizzle that on top of the bread. Then I'm going to season with black pepper. and then some sea salt. It's really important that you're using fresh black pepper and not the stuff you buy in the store that's free ground. You're releasing all the oils and all the flavor when you crack it fresh. When it sits on the shelf, it can become stale. You actually have to use more black pepper to get the true black pepper flavor. And we're using a grinder, you're gonna really capture the essence of that black pepper. The salt I'm using is sea salt from Big Sur. This is the sea salt that we use in all of our cooking here. It's locally produced in Monterey Bay. Super awesome, sustainable product. So now what we're gonna do is just give this a quick toss. Make sure that all the oil gets soaked up really well. Wanna make sure that these croutons get really nice and golden in the oven. 
but not too dark. We want to make sure they're dried up because they're going to get soaked up by our dressing. So now that it's all soaked up, I'm going to add this to my sheet tray. And I'm just going to spread them out. It's really important to not crowd the pan, but also to give them a flat surface, which will give them a nice cooking time. And it'll make it really simplistic to get that nice color on there or to get the nice crispiness. So we're going to drop these in the oven about 350 degrees, depending on your oven, to 375. We're going, to, we're going to do that for about 12 to 15 minutes. Now, I've done that ahead of time for you, and so you can see nice and crispy. I can't really squish the bread. It's nice and toasted because we really want that to soak up all the dressing that we're going to be utilizing in step two. All right, so for step two, we're going to go into our tomatoes. So first of all, I have an array of different tomatoes here. Depending on where you live in the season, you know, you can go with whatever tomato, whether it's a vine ripe, a grape tomato. I have heirlooms here, all different types, and some cherries in here as well. And this is a misstep. A lot of people, um, you know, don't think of this, but think of when you have a tomato that leaches out a ton of liquid. What we're going to do is actually use that tomato water to build our dressing. So next step we're going to do is we're going to take our tomatoes. I've already cut them up and I've kind of put some angles on there, but you can cut them right in half or in quarters, whatever you want to do. I'm going to put them into a colander. Now I'm going to add the salt. So I'm just going to put some salt on them, just enough. About a pinch, half teaspoon. And I'm going to stir those up. And what we're going to do next is we're going to leave these to sit for about 15 minutes. And in that 15 minutes, what's going to happen is the salt is going to draw out all the tomato water. And that tomato water has concentrated tomato flavor built into it. So I went ahead and did that ahead of time and got our tomato water. So this tomato water can be utilized for the building of a dressing. You can use this reduced down to add tons of tomato flavor to some of your favorite pasta dishes and the dressing is going to be amazing for step three. So we're going to make our dressing. So using our reserved tomato water that we used from our tomatoes, we're going to use that as our base, pour that into a bowl. And then we're going to start with our ingredients. I have some white balsamic. I have some Dijon mustard. And you can use whatever type of Dijon mustard works for you. If you don't like it to be spicy, um, you can utilize a, a champagne uh, mustard instead of a Dijon. It'll be a little less bitey. I have some shallots that are chopped up. You can mince them really fine. If you don't like the texture of onion soup, you can always blend this as well. Some fresh garlic. And now what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna make sure that all my ingredients are nice and incorporated. And I'm gonna slowly pour in the olive oil and just whisk. Now this is gonna be a broken vinaigrette, which means it's not fully emulsified. So think about a Caesar dressing or a ranch dressing that has kind of one consistent texture. This is gonna be broken because our bread and tomatoes are gonna soak up this dressing. So it's not important for it to be creamy. We just really are going for that flavor. So now my olive oil is in. I'm gonna add a pinch of salt. Fresh black pepper. I'm just going to incorporate that. And as you can see, it's staying together, but it's not that creamy color that you are probably accustomed to with those other dressings. It looks great. And then we're going to move on to step five. We have all of our mise en place or all of our ingredients together. And mise en place means everything in its right place. So we're going to have our dressing that we built. We're going to add our tomatoes right to our dressing. Add our crispy sourdough crouton with a little tiny bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, actually a little good luck. And now I have some fresh basil. If you can't find fresh basil, you can substitute for dried. Just go really light because dried is always going to be really intense. And I'm just going to simply take this. I'm going to just tear it with my hands. 
because I want to have that integrity of the leaf of the basil. I want to see what I'm eating. And when you plate this, you're going to be able to see those nice rivets of the basil kind of flowing through the dish. Now what we're going to do next, after I add my basil, we're going to toss this really well, and then we're going to let it sit for about 10 to 15 minutes until everything has really come together and marinated before plating. Um, you can really, like I said before, uh, you can change this however you want. Um, if you're not a big fan of basil, you can do parsley, you can do cilantro. If you're not a big fan of sourdough, you can do whole wheat or rye. It really is up to what you know, your flavor profiles are and what your family or friends want to eat. So now that we've added the basil, this looks good. Maybe one more, one more nice piece. I'm going to reserve the rest for garnish. And now we're just going to give this a nice toss. I'm just going to lightly toss this. I don't want to beat this up too much. If I start stirring too much, the tomatoes will break apart. I'll bruise the basil. So almost like folding it together. So just nice and gently flowing through. And at this point too, you can see like, do I want more basil in here? Do I want a little bit more salt and pepper? For me, it smells amazing. Everything's getting marinated really beautifully. That dressing is just soaking up into all that bread. And what we're going to do now, we're mixed incorporated well. We're gonna walk away and for about 10, 15 minutes and we'll come back and plate this. All right, and for our last step, we're gonna plate the panzanella salad. So we've let this sit for about 10 to 12 minutes. You can go a little bit longer. For me, I like to still have a little bit of crunch in the sourdough. We're gonna take a plate and I'm just going to plate right in the middle. You'll see that there's a little bit of the dressing that's totally fine. We kind of wanna see that pool of dressing coming up. If I would let this sit a little longer, It'll kind of soak up all the dressing, but for me, I like it a little bit saucy. So, a nice little mound going of this. Get all of our colors going. I can see the basil, it smells incredible. And for me, the sourdough that I picked with the olive also adds this nice brininess to the dish. I'm gonna do a little wipe here for fun. I'm gonna top this with just a tiny bit more salt, a little bit more finishing black pepper, and then I just have a couple last little basils that are fresh that I'm just going to use to kind of draw in some fresh with the marinated basil for some nice color, different taste, different textures. And that is our panzanella salad. So again, you can mix this up, whatever bread you want to utilize, whatever herbs you want to use, but the really important steps, making sure that the bread is not overcooked, making sure that you salt and let that tomato water be captured to build your dressing. Now we do a lot of cooking classes, just like this one here at 1440, we have a teaching kitchen weekend that we're going to be doing monthly, and we also have cooking classes online on 1440 TV. Hope you enjoyed this. Eat well, live well. On behalf of the entire 1440 Multiversity family, the Santa Cruz Warriors, and Kaiser Permanente, we thank you for joining our C-Dub Classics 1440 campus tour and cooking class with me and Executive Chef Kenny Woods. The Santa Cruz Warriors have activities the last Monday of every month, so for more information, visit santacruzbasketball.com forward slash classics and visit the 1440 Multiversity website at 1440.org. We look forward to having you visit our campus soon. Eat well, you live well.